So this uh, section 8.5, it's very long. And as you can see, it's a, it's a whole lot of notes, but we're gonna divvy it up. We're gonna put day, day one right here. And we're gonna stop right here. We're gonna stop right here. So over here is gonna be day two. So we're only gonna do this first part of the notes and then we're gonna practice doing the first part of the homework. And we'll continue on it the next time we meet. So day one, simply a review of what we've already been doing, which is distributed property. And you guys all showed me that you know how to distribute because y'all did pretty good. Did I say y'all? Y'all did good? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> you all did pretty good on the uh, last test. So you guys know how to distribute. Let's just practice that a little bit more. Number one, I take that seven, I distribute, what do I get? Seven X. Seven X and then seven times seven. 49. 49, easy, right? Number two, we have a 5Q. It's not just a number. It's actually a number with a variable. 5Q times two. Thank you. What was that? Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, you got it, right? 5Q times two, 10Q, you're welcome. All right, it's not that funny. Uh, 5Q times negative 5Q. <laughs> negative 25Q. Negative, five, negative 25Q squared. Distributing 8a times x, what do I get? 8ax. Now, if you're confused about this, remember there's an invisible one right here. So you multiply the coefficient 8 times the coefficient 1, that's 8. And then a times x is exactly that, ax, which means 8 times x. Let's now distribute to the minus 7. 8a times negative 7? Negative 56 with an a. There you go. Moving on. That's all. Number four, we have a single variable distributed into uh, a trinomial. So x times one, one x. And you could just write x. x times x y, x to the second, x squared with the y. x times x squared y squared, x to the third, y squared. And the last one, distribute 4x squared times 3x to the fifth. And if we're kind of rough on this, it's the coefficient 4 times the coefficient 3. What's 4 times 3? 12. Okay. And then x to the second times x to the seventh. Because when you're multiplying, you really add those exponents, right? Okay, let's distribute to the rest of them. 4x squared times 2, negative 8 x squared and negative 4x squared times x to the third? 4x to the fifth. And that's it. You know what? I'm noticing that, uh, yeah, on this one specifically, it's out of order. So let's write it in standard form. The first term, which should be the highest exponent term, which it is, it's a 12x to the seventh. The next term should be the 4x to the fifth. And the last term should be the minus 8x squared. That's about all we could do on this class opener. And it's all a review of distributive property, which we should know. Now, it's very important that you know how to do this, because if you don't know how to distribute, there is no way in heck that you're going to be able to factor. Because what is factoring? Factoring is simply doing distributive property backwards. It's like me giving you the answer and you're trying to find the question. All right, it's me giving you the answer and you're trying to find the distributive property problem. So there are many different forms of factoring. The first one we're gonna cover, the basic factoring method, is gonna be pulling out the GCF. G stands for greatest common factor. Again, greatest common factor. So there might be something in common in all the terms, but you don't wanna just pull out that something that's in common. You wanna pull out the greatest common factor. So we have some examples here. I'm going to walk you through them. Please follow along. And then you guys, you guys will get to practice on the next section. So the first thing to do when I try to uh, pull out a GCF is ask myself, is there something in common here and here? Yeah. Is, are, like, for example, are there, are there X's in both terms? No. no, no X's. Is there a multiple of two in both terms? Yeah. Yes, but it's not the greatest multiple, right? What's the greatest? Four. 
four. four. So if I do identify that there's something in common, I'm going to put parentheses down here. Everybody do that, please. And I'm actually going to pull out that GCF of four. Now, what happens here is you, you set up a reverse distributed property problem, right? In other words, four times what will get you back to the eight X? Two with an X, right? And then four times what will get you back to the minus 12? Minus three. And then you're done. Oh, okay. That's it. Nice. Right? Let's try another. Super easy. Of course, it gets more fun. Right here we have a trinomial, right? So again, I would start with coefficients with the numbers. Is there a number here? There's a one. But so over here, there's a three, there's a six. If there would be a nine right here, that'd be great because then I'd have a, a multiple of three in common. But it's not a nine, it's a one. So there is no number like no multiple that I could pull out. So then I move on to my variables. Are there X's in all three terms? No. There's an X here, isn't there? There's an X here, isn't there? Is there an X over here? No. no. Okay, so there is not even X's in all three terms. So is there Y's in all three terms? Yes. yes. Alejandro, how many Y's could I pull out from all three terms at the same exact time? How many Y's are here? Five. Could I, could I pull out five Y's from here? Yes, right? Could I pull out five Y's from here? Yes. Could I pull out five Y's from here? No. no. There's only two. So the maximum amount of Y's that I could pull out from all three terms is two. So let's first start out by doing the parentheses like we always do. And let's put that Y squared on the outside because that's the maximum amount of Y's I could pull out from all terms at the same exact time. So if I do pull out a y squared from the first term, what's going to be left? It's kind of like uh, distributing, right? y squared times what gets me back up to the x y to the fifth? Well, first of all, if, if I want to get from here to here, I need an x, right? So I need to put an x right in there. We also need y's, but how many more y's? y squared times what gets me y to the fifth? Three. y to the third, right? Perfect. Now, how about that middle term? Positive y squared times what is going to give me a negative 6y to the 7th? 6xy to the 7th. Uh, Minus 6xy to the 5th. Perfect. Uh, again, you could think of it coefficient. 1 times what gives me a negative 6? Oh, 1 times negative 6 gives me a negative 6. Uh, I need an x, so I need to put an x in there to give me that x. And then y squared times what gives me a y to the seventh? That's y to the fifth. Okay, how about the last one? y squared times what will give me a 3y squared? Just a 3. Why can't it be a 3y? Because, because, you're the because y squared times y is y to the third. And we don't, have, we don't have a y to the third up here. It's y squared. It's already a y squared. y squared times 3 will get you a 3y to the second. All right. More, more practice. Three terms. I would put the parentheses there. Now, what do you say is in common? Let's look at the numbers first, the eight, the 16, the 12. There's definitely a two in common, but that's not the greatest. Four. four. So, so yes, there, there's four and there's X's. Two X's. There's four X to the second. Yeah, four X squared. Uh, again, just to walk you through it, uh, the 8, the 16, the 12, there's a multiple of 4 in common. That's the greatest uh, common factor you're going to pull out. And then the x squared is the greatest amount of x's you could pull out from all three terms at the same time. Some of us might be thinking, what? That's x to the third. Can I pull out x to the third? Well, yeah, you could pull it out from here and here, but not here. The greatest amount of x's is x squared. So on the inside, what would be left? Uh, two x. 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, x squared times what is x to the third? Okay, and, and then minus 4 times what is negative 16? 4 times negative 4. And how about those x's? x to the third. Perfect. Because x squared times x to the third, you add them and you get to the fifth up here. How about that last term? Plus 3. No x's, just 3. Perfect. Number 4. What's in common? In all three terms? Nothing. Nothing. Wait, there's a 2 here, there's a 4 there. Uh, if that were a 6, I'd be able to pull out a 2, but I can't. 
I have an X to the third here. I have an X to the fifth here. I wish I had some X's here, but I don't. So when I'm thinking what's in common in all terms, I don't have anything in common in all terms. So am I able to factor this? No. So what do I put here? Not factorable. Now, what does that mean? That means that you're not able to factor. Not factorable. Now, this is not an equation where you could say no solution. An equation, you, you find solutions, and certain equations what, that, that are impossible to solve, that's where you say no solution. Right here, it's just not factorable. So I hope you guys understood those examples that I did. It's simply reverse distributive property. You got to look at what's in common in both. Um, and I'll tell you this, you might as well start by setting up those parentheses and then thinking about what's in common in all of your terms and see what you could pull out. What's the GCF that you could pull out that you could write out here? And then once you write it out here, find out what's missing on the inside to get back to the original. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pause it. Go for it. Here we go. What's in common in the 7x and the 49? 7. seven. What would be left over on the inside? In other words, 7 yeah, times what? Seven. That's right. 7 times what is 7x? 7 times x. 7x. Seven, x. 7 times what is 49? A positive 7. Let's move on to number 2. So what's in common in this first term and this second term? The 10 and the 25, there's definitely the number 5, the multiple of 5 that we're going to pull out. So again, let's start with the parentheses, put that 5 out there. Now there's also Q's in both terms. So what's the maximum amount of Q's I could pull out from both at the same time? 1 Q, right? So you have 5 with the Q. That's your GCF. That's your greatest common factor. Now let's think. 5 Q times what will get us back to this? 2. And yeah, we don't need another Q because that would make it Q squared. So we just, just the number 2. And then how about 5 Q times what will get us back to here? A negative 5 with a Q. Let's move on to number 3. We have two terms. Put the parentheses right there. What's in common in both? 4, but there's a bigger number than 4. 8. 8, right? 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 1 is 8. So we could pull out 8. Now, 4 would have worked, but that wouldn't have been the greatest common factor. You'd still be able to pull out more after that. So you always want to use the greatest common factor. 8, and there's also A's involved, and the greatest amount of A's we could pull out is one single A from both. So 8A, on the inside, we would have 8A times what gets us an 8AX? A simple X. You don't even have to put the 1. You could if you want to. And then 8A times what gets us a negative 56A? Negative 7, or just minus 7. Moving on. Number 4, three terms. Parentheses. What's in common in all three terms? Just one X, right? So the greatest amount of X's we could pull out is exactly that, just one X. So if I go X times what gives me that one single X? One, one right? So let's put a one right there. Plus, and right there you really do need the one, right? Because X times one gives you that first term X. Plus, X times what gets us this? X, Y. X, y. And then x times what gets us this? X squared. x squared, y squared. And let's not forget the plus sign. Yes. And number five, three terms, parentheses. What's in common in all three terms? 4 x to the second. That's right. There's a multiple of 4 here, 4 there, and 4 there that you could pull out. That's why there's a 4 out here in our GCF. And there's also x's in all three terms. And the maximum amount of x's we could pull out from all three terms is the x squared. You could pull out x squared from here, from there, and from there. That's why x squared is a GCF, or 4x squared is a GCF. Anyways, 4x squared times what gets us 12x to the seventh? 3x to the fifth. And then 4x squared times what gets us a negative 8x squared? Minus 2. And then that's it, right? And then 4x squared times what gets us a positive 4x to the fifth? positive x to the third and that's about it now anytime you're like man i don't know if i factored correctly let me see if i actually uh, how could you verify you could actually distribute it back and see if it does give you the original and that's and you'll see that it does work um, because once again a 
factoring is really a reverse distributive property. And if you don't believe me, check out the class opener, guys. I know some of us already recognized it. The class opener is the same exact questions that you did, but backwards, right? Number one, it says seven times X plus seven. We got this as an answer right here. And down here on number one, I got that seven X plus 49, and I gave that to you as the first question. And you went back to the distributed property problem, all right? So factoring is simply a reverse distributive property problem. Okay, it's doing distributed property backwards, factoring out the GCF, it's doing it backwards. And there's a lot more to this section, but I just wanna take it in small little chunks. We're gonna just focus on factoring out the GCF. And uh, next time we meet, we'll move on to the next part of these notes. So, so we are gonna get back to these notes, but just not today.